Hey guys, this is PK from Almost Inevitable Design. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this uh, a new tutorial. So, oh yeah, by the way, I'll be, I should be pointing over there because I put the camera over there and it's, on, it's opposite. But anyways, um, when I point here, I'm actually pointing to the screen, just so you know, <laughs> not pointing off screen. All right, so um, this is a topic that has come up and I was trying to help this guy and it turns out that I can make this into a tutorial. So the idea is I've seen a lot of people find really cool pens, code pens, and they want to use it on their website. Now, um, we're going to be using Divi because that's how most of my tutorials are written for. That's what most of my tutorials are written for. But this definitely works in any environment because it's still the same. It's all just web code and it has almost nothing to do with the page builder itself because all you need to do is just get the page builder to have that code in there and just render on the front end. So it's pretty easy. All right, so before we get into that, a couple of things. Now, if you understand enough about web code and how it works, that's fine. But um, just give me a minute. If you want to skip, I might leave a time stamp somewhere. But simply put, web sites are made with three types of code, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML builds the structure, you have the content, and it's wrapped in what is called markup. And those tags will wrap the content, and that's pretty much it. That's where the content is, that's HTML. CSS finds where each content, where each element is using classes and IDs, and it will style it. It will give it a certain look. That's what CSS does. Um, JavaScript adds the interactivity. Like it can pick up on what a user is doing, like mouse movements and scrolls and all that kind of stuff. And that's what JavaScript can do. And now the thing with JavaScript is that um, there's a lot of libraries because vanilla JavaScript is a little too much of a hassle to write. So there are JavaScript libraries that people make that allows you to write cooler stuff in less time. And in order for that library to work, because all browsers have vanilla JavaScript working by default, all you need to do is just add that one extra uh, uh, JavaScript library and then write the JavaScript according to that library and then it will work. Okay, that's the basic idea. So um, the pen that I'm going to go through today is um, this guy. And this is what um, the person that I was talking to uh, was having trouble with. So as you can see, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And this is really cool. So that's that's what we're trying to implement. Okay, very cool. So um, you can see here in the HTML window, all you have is one ID, and then you have a canvas. Now canvas is where JavaScript JavaScript will add visual elements and just make things work. Uh, and you can draw things on canvas and everything. So that's what that that does. Um, and then we have the CSS. Now. You can see in the parentheses it says SCSS. Now I teach SCSS. I love SCSS, and that's the language, the CSS language that I choose to always code in. Um, it, it's not written in SAS particularly. It's just vanilla CSS, but I think SAS has been turned on because this guy, his other stuff that he does is probably written in SAS. So if it is, and if it doesn't look like your regular CSS and it's just confusing, what you can do is just go here and you can click on this guy, this little chevron here, and it will allow you to view compiled CSS, All right? Compiled CSS. And that means that it will render, it will run everything through the compiler and you'll get the vanilla CSS, okay? So just do that and that's what you get. Now, like I said, there's no, there's no difference in this case, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but that's what that does, okay? Um, as you can see, there's nothing about body, and the panel here uh, is the ID, and that's about it. So what it's doing is it's doing the 100% width, and it has the full height of the browser as 100VH, and that's all you got, and you got a black background. So that's it. Now here, that's a lot of JavaScript. How do you implement this? Where do you drop it? Now, remember how I said JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript is a little hard to write, so a lot of people make 
libraries for to help other people write it a little quicker and easier and in order for you to see what this is doing you can just click over here I'll click here and you'll get these guys all right so you can see if there's a preprocessor if there is a preprocessor you can compile it and get the vanilla um, but that's not the case in this for this one but you can see I don't need that yeah you can see that it has three JavaScript libraries being loaded and one is GSAP which is GreenSock um, and one is jQuery and the other is physics 2d plugin 3 okay all right so what do we need to do we're gonna add the HTML and then the CSS and then we're going to add the JavaScript libraries and then we're going to add the JavaScript that you see here. So there. Okay. And it should work. Okay. That's how you can implement almost pretty much any pen because I've seen a lot of people doing it wrong. I'm explaining how everything works and what you need to get, like the compiled version, all that kind of stuff. And most of the times, more likely than not, it will work for you. Okay. All right. So I will walk you through everything. So Let's just assume we're gonna copy everything into a, a code module. Now, if you want this certain element to work throughout the whole site, then you can load the JavaScript in the footer. Okay, add all the JavaScript in the footer, add the CSS and the theme options, and you should be fine. It's site-wide. Otherwise, if it's just on this one page, for example, like I'm gonna be doing on the demo site, if it's that one page, then you just, you're just gonna drop everything into a code, code module. Now, um, if you're using Elementor, it would be a code widget. They're just different names. If it's oxygen, code block, element, <laughs> whatever. I don't know what Beaver does. Uh, but yeah, it's just like a Gutenberg is a block. In um, Divi, it's a module. It's all the same thing. As long as it renders raw HTML code, you'll be fine. Now. It has to be HTML because we're going to put all the JavaScript and the CSS inside the right tags, inside the right HTML tags. Okay. So it should be just HTML straight up. All right. So let's take this guy, drop that in here. Now this is formatted to show HTML syntax, as you can see. Um, and that's why all the, the tags are color coded properly. And let's see, we're gonna add, we don't need the body because the theme will take care of that. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll just take panel and we'll just put that inside a style tag. So if you do that, that's how you get the style tag. Now, what did I do there? It looked like magic, didn't it? Um, it's, I'm using a Sublime Text Editor and um, there's a plugin called Emmet, e -double -M ET or IT Emmet, something like that. And what that does is like if you're writing a div with a class of uh, single, then all you need to do is just do that and cl click on uh, tap, tab, click on tab, and you get it expanded. Like, does that, right? Like H1, like H1 entry title. Oh, H. H1 entry <laughs> title and it does that. So that's what Emmet does. So if so, if, if you want to try this out, just install it in Sublime. But or if you can just type it out slowly, style like that. Yeah. But anyways, that's what that does. All right. Now we're gonna we need to load uh, the JavaScript libraries. And oops. And you can see these three. So we're gonna take the first one, which is GSAP. Now, in order for you to load a JavaScript library in HTML, it is, we're using a script tag, and then we need the source, and then close it, and then close the script tag. Okay, so let's, um, let's duplicate these. That's uh, Command-Shift-D, duplicate that line, and we're gonna add jQuery. So from here to here, that would be jQuery. And then we're going to copy out this guy, physics 2D. And there you go. All done. So this is all ready to go. All you need to do now is take this guy. So everything in here, that's command A, command C, uh, and put it inside a script tag. Now this one, 
you don't need a source because inside the because you're not loading something you need a source to load something but if you're not using a source then you just write this just drop this in there directly now this has to come after you load all the libraries if you load it before the library it's not going to work so there you go all done that's a lot of lines but that's pretty much it now the thing is the important thing is um javascript and css target certain ids and classes in this case you already have panel that guy as you can see panel and then you have id magic dust so that's why it works if you change this it won't work if you change that it won't work okay so just make sure you got the right right things corresponding to each other okay so take that take that whole thing let's drop it into not a regular section but a full width section now you can see that I use the classic builder, the old builder, classic builder, classic builder, classic backend builder, and not the visual builder because I just can't deal with the visual builder. Even though this is the most updated version and I'm on like four point something, 4.14 or whatever I am, we're on, we're on right now, uh, Valentine's Day, whatever version it is. But yeah, I just use the updated version, but I just go back to the classic builder. Anyways. Um, drop that all in there and we're done. You don't need this section. All right. And I will, I actually made a draft just to test this before I published it. So there we go. Update. As you can see, I have a blank page, so it's not, oh, you can't see that. Can you, you can see I have a blank page, uh, just so I don't have a header on top because this is just a website that I use for making demos. So, um, there you go. Oh, yeah, okay. I need to pay for that. <laughs> See, I never thought of this. All right, um, so GSAP, you need to pay for a GSAP membership and I don't have that because I only use scroll, scroll trigger, scroll trigger, so. Um, I wonder if it works without the physics 2d plugin I'm, I'm sure it won't but let me just test that um, come on no Oh, okay. So it works without the 2D thing. Is that correct? Does this not have, it's the, the trial thing is not showing up. It's only GSAP and jQuery. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, we actually don't need the physics 2D. Cool, that's good. That's very good. All right, so there you go. Luckily, we were very lucky with this. Um, Physics 2D, we didn't need it necessarily, but I don't know why. Maybe it uses it and it just doesn't affect the, the, the result. Something like that, probably, maybe. But um, yeah, GSAP has a membership that you pay for and you're allowed to use all the separate libraries because there's the main GSAP library and then there's like a bunch of smaller libraries that do really cool things. But I only use scroll trigger uh, for my for my purposes. Um, if I need, if I have a, more advanced website that needs it, then I might pay for it, but I just don't find it, I don't have a reason for it yet. So yeah, there we go. All good, so that's working. All right, so that's that's how you implement code pens. Just to recap, HTML, same structure, CSS, you might need that just in order for you to get the right shapes and layouts. Um, if you don't understand CSS, it's gonna be a problem. Learn CSS from me, almostinevitable.com. And then um, JavaScript, uh, you need to load the libraries and then you need to load the JavaScript that you see in that far right window. Okay. All right, cool. Let me know um, if, you have, if you need any help or if you have any questions and I'll see you in another video. Bye.